This tutorial is going to cover matrices, variables, and operators. Uh, it may be quite a long tutorial, and we're going to move through a lot of stuff, um, so I'll try and go as fast as I can uh, while leaving you able to follow and understand. Let's start with creating a scalar variable. Um, let's say x is equal to 3, and we remember that we can see in the workspace a copy of x. Um, let's also do maybe y is equal to 4. And we have another variable called y with the value equal to 4. We can treat MATLAB like a large calculator, so we could do, well, we could just do normal calculation things like 3 plus 4, hit enter, and we get the answer is 7. But we can also do uh, algebraic style operations, so maybe x plus y. And x has the value 3, y has the value 4, so we get 7. And MATLAB goes a little bit beyond that. MATLAB stands for matrix laboratory, so we can have matrices and um, a simpler form of matrix is a vector, which is a row or a column matrix. So let's create two vectors. Maybe I'll change x to be a row vector. Uh, arbitrary values make it up, so maybe 1, 4, 2. I can put commas between them to find different columns, or I can just leave it with spaces. MATLAB doesn't mind. And I type that, and I get that x is a uh, 1 by 3, 1 row, 3 column matrix or a row vector and we see a copy of it up here in the workspace on the right hand side. Uh, similarly, uh, y let's say, maybe let's make that to be a column column vector, so one column uh, maybe three rows, so y uh, and we use a semicolon to tell us to go to a new row in the matrix, so one, two, four, eight maybe, and there's y. You notice that Every time I enter um, a command, it prints back to the screen. If I don't want to see that printing, I just put a semicolon at the end of the command, and it will run and execute, but won't print to the screen. Sometimes you do want to see it print, other times you won't. Uh, next thing to talk about is an extension of vectors, which will be a matrix. So you can probably guess how we're going to do this. Let's make a matrix called, uh, well, I'm going to call it X again, but I'm going to call it capital X, just to show you that MATLAB variables are case sensitive. So when it when MATLAB reads x, if it's lowercase, it thinks it's different to the uppercase. So they can be two different variables, one lowercase, one uppercase. So this is capital X. And let's completely make this up. So um, well, one, two, three, four, um, five, six, seven, eight. So that's the second row. Third row will be maybe nine, 10, 11, 12. And the fourth row will be, well, 13, 14. 15 and 16 and I'll leave the semicolon off the end because I want to see it print on the screen for your benefit and here we go um, so that's a matrix now mm, let's talk about indexing next and then we'll talk about concatenation so if I want to index one of the vectors remember x lowercase from earlier on I can say x1 let's remind ourselves what x is printed to the screen by typing x so the entry the first entry in x will be 1, the second entry will be 2. So if I went for x entry 2, I get 4. Um, similarly for y, let's say the third entry in y. So y was uh, 2, 4, and 8, so the third entry in y is going to be 8. There we go. What will happen if I try and take the fourth entry in y? Well, it doesn't exist because y is a, uh, what is y? It's a column vector, so it only has three entries. Um, matrices are a little bit more complicated because they're two-dimensional so we have to specify two indices so my matrix X which remember looks like this imagine I want to take out the uh, third let's do this one uh, third row fourth column so it'll be capital X row three column four and I should get 12 and sure enough what if I want to take several rows or columns so let's take um, the second and third rows and only the first and fourth columns. So I want to get five and nine. There we go. Try and do this five and nine. And I want to take eight and twelve. Um, so X. Well, to specify multiple rows and multiple columns, I have to give an array, uh, which will be so for the rows, I wanted the second and third rows. 
And for the columns, I wanted the first and the fourth. Now I should see 5, um, 8, 9, 12. There we go. If I want to take multiple, so I'm sort of building up to an example with the colon operator. If I want to take all the rows um, from, say, uh, sorry, columns from, say, column 2 to 4, I'd say column 2, column 3, and column 4. So I'll have second and third rows and second, third, fourth column. So I'll get 6, 7, 8, 10, 11, 12. There we go. Well, MATLAB has what's called a colon operator. Let me just show you an example. If I say 1, colon, 5, it will print out 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Um, let's use that to our advantage. So we could have said, rather than 2, 3, 4, we could have done 2, colon, 4. And that gives me 2, 3, 4 like that. If I wanted all of the columns, I could say 1, column 4, and that gives me one, two, three, columns 1, 2, 3, and 4. Uh, MATLAB has a nice property where if you want all of the columns or all of the rows, you don't need to start with the start index of the last. You just put in colon, and it understands that you mean from the beginning all the way to the end, and that's what we get. Uh, one last thing about the colon operator, um, you can actually do step sizes if you want as well. So I can make an array, let's call it Z is equal to, I can start at uh, arbitrary, it doesn't matter, uh, 0, 3, go in steps of 0 0.05 all the way up to 0 0.25. Let's make that up. Now observe what happens when it's going to count starting at uh, 0.03 in steps of 0.05 all the way up to 0.25. And I get this. And you see that. It does as high as close as it can to 0 0.25 without going over. So 0.23 is the last one that we get. Uh, you could use this to index arrays as well if you want to. So I could have gone. Uh, I think this will work. Uh, one in steps of two up to uh, the last one, which would be four, and that gives me uh, column one, and then jumps over two to column three. So it's a little bit advanced, but you can get that with practice. That's the colon operator and indexing. Uh, next is concatenation. This is a really uh, clever thing which MATLAB does. Uh, we had um, a matrix uh, X, which was this guy. And then let's make another matrix um, called um, A is equal to. I'm going to make A a four row by two column. So uh, let's do uh, one. 2, new row, 3, 4, new row, 5, 6, new row, 7, 8. There's A. I can now stick matrices together, uh, which is called concatenation. So if I go X space A, it's as if I'm making a, a row vector. Um, so it's a row with two entries, but the entries are actually matrices themselves. And when I do this, it sticks them together. So starting over on the right-hand side here, I see that the matrix A has been appended onto the end. Um, I might show you the transpose operator now, because we can use this as well. Transpose of a matrix exchanges uh, rows and columns. So I can flip, um, switch A's rows with its columns, and I get this. And now what you might see is that if I had, remember, X looks like this, I could stack x and a on top of each other if I wanted to. So I could have x. Um, so stacking on top means as if going to a new row and um, a transpose. So that makes sure that, that the transpose makes sure a is four columns wide and x is already four columns wide. So I can stack them on top of each other using semicolon for a new row. And I get this. Pretty cool. So you can build up um, arrays and matrices using concatenation. Okay, so that's um, scalars, vectors, matrices, and the colon operator and indexing and concatenation. Uh, next up is a few special variables in MATLAB. Let's start with uh, infinity. So if I take some number, 1, 2, 3, divide it by 0, I get infinity. If I did the same for negative, I get negative infinity. If I get an answer which really doesn't deserve an answer, it's a meaningless, meaningless question, say 0 divided by 0, I get NAN, which stands for not a number. Um, uh, next up is, let's talk about pi, that's an easy one. 
And MATLAB understands that PI means pi, so 3.14, blah, 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 forever and ever. Um, it also does complex numbers, so we can have I, which is no real part, and one imaginary part, or J. Engineers sometimes prefer to use J, particularly electrical engineers, because I is understood to mean current. Um, and they can be, any arithmetic can be done, so I could go I plus J, and I get 2I. Okay, so we can, it's normal complex uh, number arithmetic. Um, the last one I want to show you is what's called epsilon, or eps, it's, or in other words, machine precision. It's the smallest number, or smallest difference between numbers that MATLAB can represent. So it's pretty small, 2.22 by 10 to the minus 16, but it's not zero. So you can't represent all real numbers, an infinity of real numbers in MATLAB. If it's a computer, it can only do a, a finite number, of, an amount of numbers. So and that's the smallest difference between them, which is still pretty small. So for most operations or most programs, you wouldn't even notice. Uh, so that's special variables in MATLAB. Uh, last, uh, next thing up is operators. So I want to show you how to um, manipulate um, or add and subtract, multiply, divide, basically. So let's start with a uh, vector. So let's go back and use our x and y. Um, uh, sorry, before we do vectors, let's just do scalars. Let's keep it simple. So 4 plus 5 is 9. Um, so that's addition. Subtraction, multiplication is done with a star symbol, and division is done with backslash or forward slash. Okay, uh, we can do power, four to the power of five, and that's it for scalar operators. There's some when we move on to vectors, the operators get a little bit more complicated. There's a few extra, so let's remember what x was, and then y was a column vector. Let's just turn y into a, a row vector also, so we'll transpose it. So y is now a row vector, so we have y and x. Uh, and let's do some operators on them. I can still use addition, x plus y, and it will add the entries together. So I'll get first entry in, the, in one vector by the first and the second. So I'll have 1 plus 2, I'll get 4 plus 4, and I'll get 2 plus 8. Okay. Similar for subtraction. Uh, it's important that the vectors are the same length, so if I try and, let's say I had two different vectors, 1, 2, 3, uh, minus, and I had a vector which was only like 5 and 6, um, I get a, an error because the matrix dimensions have to be identical. Uh, so if it's a row vector, it has to be getting subtracted from a row vector of the same length. Um, so we've just done addition subtraction. Uh, multiplication doesn't make sense because in this case because we've got two row vectors and when MATLAB sees multiply it assumes you're talking about algebraic uh, linear algebra multiplication so we need to have the inner matrix dimensions agreeing so what we would prefer to do we can either have x multiplied by y transpose which means a row by a column and we'll get a scalar answer uh, no we won't because I've done something wrong y transpose there we go we get a scalar answer so that's a dot product or inner product or if we went for a column by a row, we'll get a matrix. Now, this doesn't make sense to so you go and read a linear algebra book or go to Wikipedia. This is standard um, matrix algebra. Uh, next up, so this applies, that's vectors, but it also applies to matrices um, multiplication. There is a special type of multiplication operator, which is dot multiply, and it has the effect of just multiplying the individual elements of x and y. So let me remind you, x is this, y is this, so I do x dot multiply y, I'll get 1 times 2, which is 2, 4 times 4, which is 16, and 2 times 8, which is also 16. Uh, similarly, there's a dot divide, so it divides the entries in x by the corresponding entries in y, and we get this. And there is also a dot power, so every element in x will be raised to the corresponding element in y. Okay. Uh, so that's pretty much most of the standard stuff in MATLAB. Just talk a little bit about some different data types. So these are all what we call uh, doubles. Uh, so up here in the workspace we can see class is double. And they're all 64-bit. Uh, um, each, each number, each value in the matrix will be represented using, well, I think it's 64 bits, uh, maybe less, not important. So let's talk about other data types, so strings, you can have, or what's a character array. I can have an array of characters, so instead of 
putting in numbers, I can just put in in quotes and then I put in some strings and say Stephen Redmond. So my name has 14 characters and the space in between makes 15. So I see up here my string appears and it has the value Stephen space Redmond and uh, has 15 characters in that array. And I can index it just like any other array. My string, say if it was, I might take my surname, which will be characters 8 up to 15, and I get this on the screen. So that's strings or character arrays. Um, next up is, I just want to show you, you may not use this very often, but there's a, a my cell array, some arbitrary name. Uh, you'll notice the way I'm naming variables uh, just to make it readable. I don't want to put several, it all has to be one word or no spaces in the variable name. So in order to help me read it, I capitalize, leaving the first letter low, lowercase, and I capitalize the first letter of every other word just to help me read it more easily. So my cell array will be, and I'll make an array, it's a different type of array, it's a cell array. So instead of having square brackets, we have uh, curly brackets. And in here I can have different, very, very different data types. So I could have things like, it might be a matrix, two by two matrix, one, two, three, four. Then it could be a character array, which may or may not have square, you don't necessarily need square brackets on a character array, but let's just be consistent with square brackets on. Be Steven. Um, then we go to a new line in this cell array. And again, one, two, three, doesn't matter. And then Maybe it could even be another cell array inside, so it's very it's like an inception here where it just gets deeper and deeper. Um, so that could be one, two, three, comma, forty-five or something. And there we see these very different data types of different sizes, even all arranged in this uh, cell array. So it's almost like a table. Uh, it can be useful for storing that information if you need to keep them all uh, tied and organized together, but they've got different data types. And last up, uh, second to last up, is just a bit about deleting variables. If I want to delete a single variable, I type clear, and then on space, and then the name of the variable. So let's get rid of um, the matrix A, which I had earlier on. So A, return, and it's gone. Now, if you want to get rid of all of the data, you type clear, and be careful, because that's, once it's gone, it's gone, and all my data has just been destroyed. Let's just create some more data because I want to show you finally how to save variables. So if I click in the workspace, uh, hold control on the keyboard and then click again, I get multiple variables. I can right click now and say save as and it might be called my data. I've already got a file there. I just override it. Do you want to save it? Yes. Now if I clear, my data is gone but I can recover it using loading from the workspace. Um, there's my data. Open. Is that the data? Yes, it is. Finish, and it gets reproduced in the workspace. So it's very important to save your data during when you're doing experiments or when you're working to make sure that you don't accidentally delete it all and, and the whole expedition ends in tears.